This time, instead of dealing with historical incidents, I will explain about Japanese villages. It may not be very interesting, but we hope you will see it through to the end. Until just 100 years ago, more than 90% of human life was lived through agriculture. That is to say, villages where people farmed were all that people had. In the previous issue, I explained the period from the Jomon period to the Kofun period. In this issue, I will discuss agricultural policies from the Asuka period to the Heian period, up to the establishment of the Samurai. In ancient times, Japan was ruled by a group of powerful clans led by an emperor. It was Emperor Tenchi who overturned this system of collective rule in favor of a centralized political system led by the emperor. He defined all the people and land in the region, which had previously been ruled by powerful feudal families, as the property of the emperor. The emperor would lease the land to the people, who in return would yield the crops from the land to the emperor. The government conducted a household registration survey once every six years. Adult males who were registered were given the right to cultivate approximately 2.4 hectares of land, and adult females were given approximately 1.6 hectares of land. The administrative divisions of the provinces were also reformed. Local administrative units were divided into Kuni, Gun, and Sado. A large local administrative unit was designated as a Kuni, and its director was dispatched by the imperial court. Under the kuni were administrative units called gun, and local feudal clans were appointed as directors of these guns. Under gun, there was sado, which consisted of 50 people registered in the family register. The leader of the sado was the one who actually managed the people. During this period, a status system existed, and those registered in the family register were independent peasants called good citizens. Slaves under their control did not have family registers. Agriculture in this period was not yet technologically advanced and required a lot of manpower to grow rice. Slaves were needed for this purpose. The Sado, a village in the 600s, was just an administrative division and was very different from today's villages. They lived near the fields where they grew their own food and did not live together as a cohesive group. They lived exclusively in families and groups of slaves headed by the head of the household register. They were obliged to collect not only the crops they grew, but also local products, and to participate in civil engineering projects. These burdens were very heavy on the farmers. There is a poem by the Nara period poet Okura Yamanu that describes the farmers of this period. I work as much as any man and yet I wear on my shoulders a garment as tattered as seaweed without cotton. And in my crumbling and crooked house I spread straw on the ground, and my parents toward my pillow, and my wife and children toward my feet, and they surround me, morning. There was no fire in the kitchen, the bowl for cooking rice was covered with cobwebs, and they seemed to have forgotten how to cook rice. The voice of the village headman with his whip could be heard even in the sleeping quarters, hurry up and put the rice in the pot. Is the world really this helpless? Thus, the exploitation of the people by the imperial court was severe. But the people were helpless. And if so, what did they do? It was flight. They abandoned their cultivated lands and became vagabonds in the capital and towns. Vagrants in this period had an extremely high probability of dying. Still, they had to leave. Thus, by the 700s, the first half of the Nara period, the business model of the emperor leasing land to the people and yielding the crops to the imperial court was on the verge of collapse. Therefore, in 723, Emperor Shomu enacted a law to acquire new land for cultivation in order to increase the amount of land under cultivation. It allowed those who cultivated new rice paddies to own the land for their grandchildren. This reversed the assumption that the emperor owned all land. Still, there was no increase in new cultivated land. So in 743, Emperor Shomu issued a law allowing those who cultivated new rice paddies to own the land. Thanks to this law, the number of settlements has increased considerably. Why is that? This is because aristocrats and temples and shrines set out to cultivate the land under cultivation. With funds, 
They commissioned local powerful families to cultivate land using vagrants who had escaped from cultivated land hanging out in towns and farmers living in the vicinity of the land to be cultivated. These lands are called early manors. The bearers of the early manors, which began in the Nara period, were local powerful families who were county governors, and even manors that could be owned by temples, shrines, and nobles had to pay taxes to the imperial court. And the chief of the country, the largest local unit, was the one who collected these local taxes. They were officials sent by the imperial court with a fixed term of office. Many of them were aristocrats and royalty who could not rise to the top in the central government, and they imposed heavy taxation to line their pockets as much as possible while they were still directors of the state. This meant that the nobles and temples and shrines had no incentive to acquire new farmland that they had gone to the trouble of cultivating. Therefore, the Fujiwara and other aristocrats with large manors enacted a convenient law that manors owned by them would not be subject to taxation. What would happen then? The local powerful families who cultivated the land on their own sought the protection of the nobility and donated their manors to the nobles who had great power. They hoped that by becoming nobles, they would be exempted from taxation. This is called a donated land-based manor. There was another advantage to endowing manors to nobles. It was the right not to be ruled by the head of the province, the Kokushi. As mentioned earlier, the Kokushi, who were appointed for a fixed term, used officials to collect arrogantly in order to line their own pockets during their term of office as much as possible. Their rights were protected by coming under the protection of powerful aristocrats. Thus, in the Heian period 1000s, more land was owned by nobles and temples than by the imperial court. This was the Heian period when the aristocratic Fujiwara clan was in charge of Japanese politics. Their power was supported by donated manors. This newly cultivated farmland also made it possible to create new wealthy farmers. Expanding the farmland also created various problems with other pioneers. In particular, securing the source of water necessary for rice cultivation was a matter of life and death for the pioneers. They also needed to protect themselves against the tyranny of the local government officials. Thus, the newly settled wealthy farmers had to take up arms to protect their water sources and land with their neighbors. Yes, the samurai were born. Samurai repeatedly fight with their neighbors, and the powerful warriors follow the surrounding warriors to form a large group of warriors. Here is another element that forms the samurai. There are two main lineages of samurai in Japan. They are the Taira clan and the Minamoto clan. The Taira clan was descended from Emperor Kanma, who settled in the provinces and rose to prominence as a warrior clan. The Minamoto clan is descended from Emperor Saiwa. As mentioned earlier, nobles and royalty who failed to rise in the ranks tried to gain wealth in the provinces by becoming national governors. Some of them started living in the countryside. This is the case of the Taira and Minamoto clans mentioned earlier. The local warriors wished to increase their own authority by having a nobleman of high rank as their lord. The descendants of the emperor had such authority. Many samurai joined the Minamoto and Taira clans. In this way, the Minamoto and Taira clans steadily built up their power in the provinces. Now, what was a farming village like at this time? Actually, the reality of a village did not yet exist. Peasants did not own their own fields unless they were powerful farmers. They plowed the fields in their charge and gave most of it to the owner, a nobleman or temple who received the rest. It was not uncommon for a single farmer to cultivate rice fields owned by multiple owners. Villages were never unified, and the concept of a village did not exist in the Heian period. Wealthy farmers who cultivated the land themselves, and later the samurai, put their lives on the line to protect their land, but the farmers, mere cultivators, had no attachment to the land. I believe that the establishment of the village was essential to the process by which the Japanese people acquired their distinctive and unique characteristics. We have to wait until the Kamakura period to see the emergence of this village as a group of farmers. In the next issue, 
I would like to explain the activities of the samurai who leaped onto the political stage from the late Heian period and the establishment of villages. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel and click the like button.